Okay, so I want to talk about how we can be uh, become a man or woman of faith today, because I know you know life goes on, but um, life goes on, but it doesn't have to be uh, any harder than it than it is. Um, peace, the peace we have in God, the peace that transcends all understanding, is can never be uh, overrated, never, um, and that's that's where this faith will will, will get you. Um, so I want to share uh, Romans 10:17 says so faith comes from hearing that is hearing hearing the good news about Christ and so the whole Bible is filled with his good news from Genesis chapter one talking about his creation that is good news um, and it's it's all throughout um, and it's in it's good news about Christ Christ is in every book of the Bible um, so. That's the only thing I can really point to, because frankly, guys, um, you know, going to church every every Sunday and obeying the Sabbath, that is that is great. Um, but if that's all you're doing, and and maybe throwing in a Bible study here and there, even even weekly, um, I, I'm frankly going to say that it, it's not enough, um, because. Uh, and I and I can find other scriptures to back this up. I don't think I need to. But worshiping God and becoming a true disciple of Him is a daily, it's a daily thing. Um, we need Him daily. We need to rely on Him. We need to worship Him daily. Um, so Joshua one eight is always been one of my favorite promises. And yeah, it's not in the mm-hmm. New Testament, but nevertheless, I, I still find it um, applicable. Um, Joshua 1, verse 8 says, Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate, meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. And, of course, God's success is, is not our definition of success. Um, but nevertheless, um, his success is what counts the most. So... Um, Meditate on it day and night, and this echoes, uh, I think I think David echoes this in, in Psalm chapter 1, um, meditating on scripture, because uh, this, is, this is the key, this is my secret to developing the life of faith that I have. Um, so I just want to briefly discuss, um, after this next passage, I want to discuss how we can worship God daily, how we can um, practically obey um, those verses we read before, John 4, Romans 12, uh, Matthew 22. Um, how can we do this daily? And I'm telling you, if you're worried about a time commitment, that, that's not, that's not going to fly. Because we can all give um, a little uh, of our day. And let's face it, if we, if we say we're seeking God first, if we're seeking his kingdom first and his righteousness, um, as, it, as, it, as it says, in, as Jesus said, in Matthew 6:33, if we're seriously doing that, um, then we have to, you know, give him each day and say, Lord, this is your day. Thank you for this day. Please help me to serve you. Um, help me to be the man you want me to be, the woman you want me to be. Um, and and so that is uh, that is how we worship. I mean, it, it, it's not. This isn't rocket science. This isn't something that's very difficult. And you pray with whatever's on your heart. Let me, let me share something. If you're not used to reading every day, if you're not used to praying every day, first of all, it's difficult to develop the habit. And that's why we need fellowship. We need to fellowship with people that love God more than us when you, when you start. Because when you're not used to reading every day, when you're not used to praying every day, it's difficult. So let's at least talk with people that love the Lord and have been there, um, you know, at it longer than us so that, so that they can help us do this because that's what discipleship is all about. That's what real discipleship is that many churches just don't get today because a pastor can't disciple every member of his congregation. So there's, there's something broken in many churches. Some churches I suppose do it right. But nevertheless, discipleship is just one-on-one. It's, it, it's the one that's followed God longer and that can say, you know, you just, just, you know, if you fall, just get up and, and, and keep going and keep praying. So if you miss a day of prayer, you know, that's, you know, just 
try, do it again tomorrow. He wants your best. And if you're living a life like I was, that was no discipline whatsoever, there's hope for you. Because if he can do it in me, I know he can do it in anyone. So um, we need to make a concerted effort, a seriousness, to, to spend time with those that have followed God longer than us. And um, I, 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 I promise you, if you seek the Spirit, he will lead you to whoever it is. Because he did that for me. I didn't even talk about my spiritual father. And I, you know, it was a mistake. It was a coincidence for me. But it was God. God ordained our meeting. He, he held the Bible in high regard. I, you know, everything, you know, much of what I learned, I learned from him. He'd been seeking God 30 years before me. He was, he was 68. I was 38. Um, so that was a key relationship for me. And he passed that baton to me. The passion he had for Scripture, the passion he had for Jesus, he gave to me. And so um, we all need that if we're just getting started in a, in a walk of faith. And uh, on Monday nights, we meet and we talk about the Bible every week. So whoever's listening to that can join us on Monday night. Um, so let's face it. The Lord made it clear to me, and I'm not going to get into that today, but the Lord made it clear to me that there's three activities that we have to pursue to be on his path, three activities, and it's very basic. We need to be in prayer, we need to be in the Word of God, and we need to be in fellowship. And if we focus on these three activities on a weekly basis, on a regular basis, we'll stay on his path. We'll keep growing. Because this is about renewing our mind. Remember, it talks about in Romans 12. Renewing our mind with his ways and his words and, and, um, and worshiping in truth and in spirit. So we need the prayer because we need to pray to say, God, open my heart, open my eyes to your words. So the word... And prayer go hand in hand. They go together. Reading the Word makes you a better prayer warrior. And when you're a better prayer warrior, you read the Word better. You'll just be, your heart will be in it rather than just reading words on a page. You'll, you'll consume it. And it'll give you a greater appetite. So they work together. They fuel each other. And then fellowship even takes it up a notch. This kind of fellowship, my friends, what we're enjoying on this, in this call today, really uh, there's a synergy here because we have the word of God. We're sharing his bread together. We're breaking his bread together in a spiritual way, and um, this is a spiritual high for me because it's, you know, talking about what he loves most. He wants us to know him. He wants us to follow him. He wants us to serve him with everything we got. So um, this is a very – so just to sum it up, I recommend that um, uh, people follow I, – I, for me, I need a plan to read through the Bible. Every year I, I get a new plan. And I don't know if that's just me or if that's just my personality. And, 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 and I know there's some of people out there that have a hard time reading if they're dyslexic. And I'm a slow reader to begin with. I'm a very slow reader. Don't think that I'm a fast guy. And for a period of time, I didn't want to read anything. That's not part of my testimony. I wasn't even a reader. Um, but, but, but for some people, they have a hard time reading. And um, there's, there's many ways that you can hear the Bible audibly. So if you want to um, learn about that, uh, I can help you find places to read it, uh, to listen to it. Or you can have your spouse read it to you. Um, there's different ways. And so not only I want people to commit to reading, but I want people to read it with someone else. No, don't go it alone. Again, it's part of fellowship. That's what I have with my brother, and that's what anyone can have with someone else that wants to read along with them. And you don't have to read four chapters a day or three chapters a day. You can read one chapter a day. If you just decided to read, and it's between you and, and God, you and your God that you love, uh, you know, the creator as well as I do, um, if you decide to read just one chapter a day, read the New Testament. Um, we, have a, we have a plan that has reading the New Testament every day, just weekdays only, that's, and that will that'll be 260 chapters divided into, you know, around it's around 260 uh, week, work, weekdays out of the year. You know, it varies from year to year, but nevertheless, it's, it's a way to stay in the Word. Um, and, and so that's what I recommend. And then uh, fellowship. Uh, meet once a week, meet more than that if you need to. Some people, their lives are wrecks, and they, they might need more than that. And I recall a couple times crying on my my heavenly, my, my spiritual father's shoulders um, at, at Starbucks. 
I needed him. I needed the presence of God in him to lean on uh, as another as a Christian brother, and, and he was like a father to me. Mm. Anyway, uh, so mm. I just that's 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 my spiel. That's my uh, uh, plan. That's my sales pitch to get people <laughs> excited about God and uh, so that they uh, uh, grow in their faith. Um, so whether you spend time with us on the Bible team on a weekly basis, you know, that's, that's up to you if you can make that. Otherwise, I, you know, I just want people to, to read the Word of God because it, it's through this that we'll be united as a body of Christ. It's through this we'll be united in fellowship. That we don't have to agree on all the doctrines. We don't have to agree on all the peripheral issues. We, we love Christ. We know what he's done for us because he loved us first. We're just returning that love is all we're doing. Um, so um, we're looking forward to our, our future with him. Um, so, Mom, go ahead and read for, from us uh, John 15, and we'll, we'll comment on this passage, and then we'll be done. We'll, we'll, we'll go to prayer and, and close the call. Mom, John 15, please. John 15, 5 through 8. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and I will, it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Okay, here's here's. I'll give you I'll give you a, a, a brief comment on this, and then I'll open it up for uh, comments, uh, other thoughts, and then we'll close in prayer. But I just want to quickly say this passage is both sobering, and it's also um, great news for me when I read it. <clears throat> it says, "When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples." And and what we've talked about today is about is about becoming a true disciple. And remember, it's simple. This isn't something, you don't have to go to divinity school, you don't have to go, you know, master in theology, you don't have to become a monk, you don't have to, to sign up, you know, for any special uh, class or program in any kind of church and, and, and be a, a, a good boy at whatever denomination that you subscribe to. This is about a relationship between you and your God. And um, this is a personal thing that you need to work out for yourself. At, at the end of your life, when you look back on it and you think, you know, what did I really give? How did I respond? Was I responsible with the faith that God gave me? If you gave your life to God at a certain point in time, this is about um, uh, remaining in him. This is about um, uh, working out your salvation. Uh, this is about being a servant of the Most High God. And so, you know, when I read those stories in the Old Testament, uh, which I take very seriously. I, I, I take it as a, it, I, I like play it like a movie in my head because I believe it actually happened. When I read about Gideon, who was the, the least of his father's family and, 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 and not a prominent family, um, he was called a mighty warrior. And guys, I, I take that seriously. And not a warrior in a physical sense. He was a warrior in a physical sense. But we're warriors in Christ. We are victorious. And he wants us. To participate, he wants us. You know, I, I think about Isaiah in, in, in chapter six of Isaiah. He says, "Here I am, Lord." God wants people to step up and become committed to Him, and I want to see people stepping up and becoming committed to Him. Ordinary people. I'm not calling people to seminary. I'm not calling people to become pastors. I'm calling people to be warriors and servants of the Lord Most High, so that. The Lord will be known so that people will know the Lord today. People will know how great he is because of what he's done for me, an ordinary guy giving me the passion I have and, and teaching me all these things throughout Scripture. I want to see that in other people's lives. That's really what's going to set the body of Christ on fire is, is, is them applying themselves as, and presenting themselves as holy and living sacrifices to the Lord. That is what's going to uh, turn people's eye and say Greg Karmic is not the same guy he once was. 
and I knew Ken Souter long ago, but he's he's nowhere near like like I knew the Ken Souter. And so um, I I want people's heads to be turned and say, you know, their God is real. And we see this all throughout Scripture, God getting people's attention to to come along with him, to join him in his great master plan to reconcile others. It's that ambassador role that's mentioned in 2 Corinthians 5. Um, So, gosh, I thought that was going to be short, but I I just go on and on. So um, uh, I think I've said enough. Does anyone have anything to share to add? And then we'll close in prayer. Just listening, um, it came uh, to me that uh, I have a personal mentor uh, from a business standpoint, um, and he's really big on what's called a 21-day challenge. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. Um, It takes 21 days to create a new habit, and someone can't break a, a bad habit They have to replace a bad habit with a good habit. And to do that, it takes 21 days of doing it every day. Um, Just listening through uh, the last 15 minutes, um, I I came up with uh, five actionable items that I'm going to work on. Um, One is listen if I'm going to do an audio book or read. Uh, from the Bible daily, um, from a plan every day, uh, to fellowship, uh, weekly basis or daily, uh, and you said it was discipleship. Um, basically, uh, check in with a mentor or someone who's farther along the path than I am, and it, it provides uh, accountability. Uh, number three is pray and talk to God every day. Four, uh, share the word with someone else, Um, even if it's my wife or my children or someone I don't even know. Um, What I'm going to read, I'm going to try and share and relate to someone else what I've learned. And number five is uh, like an accountability daily type of check-in. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log this in uh, an online journal for myself. Wow. Well, Greg, that just puts a huge smile on my face. That that is amazing. I wrote all those down. <laughs> that's that's wonderful. Um, you know, it's it's amazing. Uh, God can give us many things, I, and I've learned through um, business studies. Um, uh, uh, well, not business studies, but I've learned from the business world uh, also things that I can apply spiritually practical mm-hmm. things like you're talking about. So I really appreciate that, Greg. Thank you mm-hmm. for sharing that. I think a 21-day challenge, I think it's a great idea. Uh, challenge yourself mm-hmm. for 21 days and develop that habit because that's it's really what we're talking about doing. And do it with someone else because that way you have that built-in accountability. And, 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 and you do it in a, in a good way. I've seen accountability uh, systems where you know people beat each other up, but it's not about that. It's about encouraging each other to get in the Word and just, just sticking with it. Because I wasn't reading every day. That first year, I wasn't reading every day. Um, that's what we're, we're – I, you know, I used to be tempted to read ahead or just to fall back and, and catch up. And um, um, it took me a while. It took me a, a long while before it – was, it was into that second year that I really became every day. Um, so I, I love all that you said, Greg. Thank you. Um, I think, Ken, you were going to say something? Uh, yeah, I I just want to praise the Lord that um, God got me into a daily Bible reading um, with my wife when we first got married. Um, so it's been probably 15 years now we've been reading through the Word of God every single morning, unless there's some major thing that gets in the way. <laughs> but um, it's just been a real blessing and it's certainly helped us to grow tremendously and opportunity to uh, share with my wife every morning. Um, the other thing I did is I prayed the, a prayer trip that I just said, Lord, I want you to enlarge my territory. What would you have me to do? I'm a regular guy, but as you said, we're just normal, ordinary people. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a seminary graduate. I'm none of those things. But uh, the story of Gideon just really spoke to my heart how he 
is used of God. And um, you know, God showed me that we're in a warfare right here. This is a church militant right now. Uh, we are uh, to go forth and uh, be ambassadors for the king and reconciling them to God. Um, and uh, what a tremendous, uh, exciting life that is. I mean, it's just beyond belief, really. Uh, but so many, so many really never really capture that vision. And so they're kind of bored and you know, dragging them along. But as you said, you know, once you get into the Word and get in tune with the Spirit, God just does like, phenomenal things with ordinary people in a prison for that. I, I guess, Ken, the, the biggest thing I want to say to what you said was it doesn't surprise me that you've been reading the Word of God because I see the fruit of that. So that it, it, I'm not surprised one else that you share that in that your testimony, he's changed you because of that, and um, <clears throat> and you have that, that testimony to share. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, what I wanted to say is um, – I don't, I don't have these um, particularly memorized well, uh, but um, the Bible gives uh, several examples of people who were called um, in very ordinary uh, positions um, and who God simply called because in spite of their ordinary position, they just had a passion. Uh, Jesus saw the, the passion that they had for him, and I, I think Amos might have been an example because Amos was just a shepherd. And then I think Ezekiel was just kind of hanging out with other people in Babylon, but he probably had a stronger heart for God than most of the others, and God ch chose him from that. It wasn't that they were necessarily greatly trained. In the case of someone who was greatly trained, uh, you look at the Apostle Paul, he was brilliant, but he was very much trained in something opposing Christianity. So... Yes, uh, God did use Paul's intellect in his, in his learning, but he also changed Paul's entire worldview. So God is not bound by a relative lack of, of um, natural gifts. He just, he just wants to look for people who, who love him and want to know him better. Sadly to say, that's a rarity enough by itself. Amen, Andy. Very, very thoughtful uh, comments. I appreciate that. So it, it, come as you are, not, not based upon what you already know. Um, come because you love God, and he'll, he'll uh, lead you accordingly. Um, any other thoughts or comments before we close? Um, it kind of struck me that uh, we were both in the Marine Corps Reserve, and uh, basically what uh, – synopsis of what you had said, can't be really a weekend warrior for God. Uh, you can't do it on <laughs> once a week, one or two days. you mm -hmm. got to do it every day. Um, hey, amen. It, 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 just, it just struck me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, you're, you're exactly right. Um, I never felt, you know, when we were in the reserves, I mean, I knew we were Marines, but you know, one weekend out of the month, are you kidding me? I mean, I, I you know, until we were signed, you know, uh, we're, well, I, I volunteered for the Persian Gulf War and became regular for a period of time to serve in the, uh, the Gulf War. Um, then I was a Marine every day. <laughs> then I felt apart, really, much more than I ever had. And I know you guys were eventually caught up uh, to, to serve somewhere um, out of Columbus. But nevertheless, um, you're, you're absolutely right, Greg, and I appreciate that. We're a servant of the Most High every day, not just on Sundays or during Bible study. Um, and that's, that's what this is about, because it's getting the words in us, um, and then they become a part of our consciousness. Um, pray without seeking these verses that we uh, memorize, you know, commit to, to memory. Um, we, we start, you know, start to germinate as we... You know, as we meet people, and I, I, I can be very prejudiced. If I see, you know, uh, the wrong tattoo or certain body piercings, I can be very prejudiced. It's just, it's my human nature. And so um, I love the verses. I think there's one, in, again, in, it's Romans 12 when Paul says to uh, treat others as better than you are. Um, and that, that really uh, speaks to my spirit. So I, that's just a real practical thing, of course. When we have the word of God on us and we start loving people um, as God would love them, 
seeing people as, as God would see them. Um, and that's really in the practical part of it. So I, I really appreciate that. It's, it's not about being a weekend warrior. It's about being a daily uh, servant. Mm-hmm. 